hello everybody. Uh, my name is Tori Wynn and I'm going to go ahead and get started with our Canvas 101 training. Um, in this training, I'm going to walk you through a couple of different resources when it comes to our Canvas transition from Blackboard. Um, and then I'll also walk you through the Canvas LMS. We're going to cover a lot of the navigational structures in Canvas that are quite a bit different from the ones in Blackboard. And then we're going to dive into an actual Canvas course and take a look at some of the features that are available to you in Canvas. Uh, we do have additional trainings on top of this one available on our training calendar with UMKC Online. So I definitely recommend um, looking into some additional follow-up trainings after we've finished the Canvas 101 training. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, I took you first to the UMKC Canvas transition page. This Canvas transition page has a lot of information about how this transition is taking place. And it also has information on Canvas instructor guides, Canvas student guides, and Canvas training workshops. Um, all of these resources are available to you and can answer a lot of your different Canvas training questions. Um, so go ahead and check out those resources when you have a little bit of time. As you scroll down the page, you'll also uh, be able to see some frequently asked questions about Canvas, um, including probably our most popular question, which is how do I migrate my Blackboard course to Canvas? Um, you can find all sorts of different information in this FAQ area. We also have a really fun Blackboard ending timer, so you can see exactly when Blackboard will end at our institution, as well as information on our transition timeline. Uh, right now, we are just almost towards the end of phase one in summer 2018. In fall 2018, we'll begin phase two of our transition. Um, and during this time, courses are going to begin to be taught in Canvas and Blackboard. Um, all of your courses will be created in the Canvas LMS. You'll need to make a specific request um, using the Blackboard request system if you're interested in teaching in Blackboard in the fall. So we are going to have a lot of courses created in Canvas and only Blackboard courses created if they are requested by the instructor. So go ahead and check out that website when you have a little bit of time. And again, I will send that link um, to you at the end of this presentation. So to access the Canvas LMS, um, we can do this in a couple of different ways, but I think the easiest way to access it is through the UMKC homepage. You'll notice that in the bottom right hand corner, there's a Blackboard and Canvas button. Now you'll have to sign into Canvas using your UMKC SSO and password. So have that ready when you're ready to sign it. Now, when you log into Canvas, it's going to take you to the Canvas dashboard. And this is very similar to the Blackboard landing page where you'll see a list of all of the classes that you're enrolled in, either as a student or an instructor. So I'll have every class listed on this page. Now, before I dive into any of the Blackboard courses, I'm going to start with this navigation menu on the left hand side of the screen. No matter where you are in Canvas, this navigation menu is always going to be available to you. So it's important to understand what each of these buttons do. Now the very first one is account, so we're going to start with that. This uh, account is going to be associated with your Canvas um, SSO and password and will appear anytime you post any information or post to a discussion board in Canvas. Um, so the very first thing that you'll want to do when you come into Canvas is take a look at your account and your account settings. The first option is profile. Now your profile is going to be available to any of your students um, or anyone you come in contact with in Blackboard. It's a little bit like a basic Facebook profile. It's just gonna give a little bit of information about you so people know maybe how to contact you or what your role is at the university. Um, when you log into Canvas and you're interested in editing your profile, um, you can do that by selecting the top right hand corner um, three dots and selecting edit profile. That will give you the opportunity to edit some of the information on this page, including your name and your title. And give a brief biography of yourself um, for your students in Canvas or for anybody else who might come in contact with your profile. Another fun feature um, with Canvas is that you can also include associated links with your profile. So if you have a blog um, or a professional website, you're able to link to that. You're also able to link to maybe your department homepage or any other important links for any of your courses. So you can add those by adding a link um, anywhere on this page. Now, an important thing to note about Canvas is that anytime you make any edits or changes to a page, 
I definitely recommend scrolling all the way down to the bottom of the page and looking for a save or update button. Um, I've made the mistake quite a few times in Canvas already by not scrolling down and looking for that button. If you don't press save or update on a page, it will not save any of your changes and those changes cannot be recovered. So make sure you're always scrolling down to the bottom to make changes. The next thing you can do and edit on your profile page is add a profile picture. And to do that, you can highlight or hover over the account picture um, and then select click to change profile picture. It's gonna appear like a little pencil. And you can upload a picture, you can take a picture, or you can take one from Gravatar, which is an avatar function um, available in Canvas. I definitely recommend including some sort of photo alongside your profile even if it's not your face, it might be, you know, your dog, um, a picture of your favorite food, even just something that helps students quickly identify who's posting in their Canvas course. So I definitely recommend including at least this feature on your Canvas profile. Now, after you've edited the profile in Canvas, the next thing I definitely recommend you look at is the notifications setting in your account. So if I click on notifications, it's going to take me to a page where I can change my notification preferences. Now, this is a really nice feature in Canvas that was um, a little bit, it's actually a little bit more robust than the one that was available in Blackboard. Um, we have quite a few different types of notification preferences in Canvas. Um, there's actually four of them in total. We have notify me right away, so you'll get a notification to your email address anytime anything happens in Canvas. You'll get a daily summary sent to you at the end of the day that will summarize those activities. Or you can get a weekly summary, so it will send to you at the end of the week um, about the different activities that happened in Canvas. Or you can select that you would not receive anything about this item. So those are the four different categories here, and they define those at the top of the page. Now there's also quite a few different things that you can be notified about in Canvas, including things like course activities, discussions, conversations, scheduling, groups, alerts, and conferences. And each of those categories have additional items within them. And anytime you wanna know more about what a course activity might mean, if you hover over that item, it will actually give you a definition of what that means. So for example, late grading means that you will receive a notification anytime a late assignment is submitted to you. So. If I want to change any of these notification preferences, let's say I'm really tired of getting all of the announcements for files in my course, I can click and change any of those notification preferences. So I can change it by selecting something like notify me right away, send daily summary, or send weekly summary. And you're able to change for each of those individually. So take a little bit of time um, when you first start in Canvas to edit those notification preferences and really control your Canvas experience. Um, there's quite a few different things and it's probably going to take a little bit of adjusting um, to decide what you like best when it comes to Canvas. My favorite feature is that daily summary. Um, I really like having that option for grading. Um, I think it's really nice to know exactly sort of what's happening in my daily summary, um, but not having to get notification preferences immediately after something happens in a course. So we've gone through notifications and profile. The next item we're gonna just take a brief look at is files. Canvas comes with um, some file storage for you. You have um, a few gigabytes available to you in Canvas. Um, so you're welcome and encouraged to save files, especially for your online courses, um, in the files area in your account settings. You'll also notice that there are files available for all of the courses that you are enrolled in as an instructor as well. Um, so I'm able to see any of the files available in any of these courses. So I'll scroll back up and go to my files, which are files that are associated directly with my account. I'm able to add folders for organizational purposes. If I select add folder, it'll give me an area where I can add a name to that folder. Um, and I can upload documents directly from my computer as well. So all I have to do is click and open that file and it will be uploaded into my Canvas files. Um, and so you're able to view the date that those were actually created and occasionally the size of those files as well. So you're able to really track the type of files that are available to you. 
I encourage you to use this file storage. Um, I think it's going to be really easy to use, especially when we start putting files into our courses. Um, so take a little bit of time to look at this option um, and see what you can add to your Canvas page. So the next thing we're going to take a look at, we're going to go to account again, um, and then we're going to look at settings. And this is going to take us to our settings page. This is mostly just something to be aware of. Um, it's not likely that you're going to edit a lot of these settings. But this is where you can see um, the language that is set for your account as well as your time zone. Um, so maybe if you teach in a different time zone online for UMKC, you might want to adjust that setting. Um, or if you maybe teach something like Spanish online, you might want to change your system default uh, language. So just uh, something to think about for your settings. Um, you can edit those by selecting edit settings um, over on the right hand side of the page. So those are the sort of the major things that you want to be aware of, of um, about your account in Canvas. If you ever want to log out of Canvas, there is the log out button available in the account area um, in your course as well. Alrighty, so the next thing that we're going to move on to, you shouldn't have an admin button here. Um, so we're going to ignore that one for now. We'll move on to dashboard. So dashboard is going to be the launch page um, that you saw when we first logged into Canvas. So this is first going to list all of the courses that you're enrolled in, whether you're an instructor or a student. And then on the right hand side of your page, you're also going to see a couple of items, including a to do list, um, a coming up list, which is associated with your Canvas calendar. Um, and then you're going to be able to see um, some recent feedback if there has been feedback in your course. Um, you're also able to view grades from this area as well. So this is just a really nice summary of exactly what's happening in Canvas and what's coming up next for you in Canvas as well. Now, if you select the dashboard settings button in the top right hand corner, those three dots, you can change the way you view your dashboard. Right now I have it on card view, which creates a little tile of each of my courses, but I can also organize my course by recent activity. It's not quite as visually appealing, but it does give me a couple of different ways that I can view activity in my courses, including announcements, messages, assignment notifications, and discussions. Um, so really, it's all about how you want to control your user experience. So I'm going to go back to card view for a second. Um, another one of the options that you have for Canvas um, for organizational purposes is that you can also add a color overlay to each of your Canvas tiles. So if I select that, you'll notice that each of my tiles has now changed a different color. Um, this is just a really nice way to help you stay organized in Canvas. Um, so you're welcome to turn that feature on and off, um, depending on how you want to control your Canvas experience. Now the next item is each individual tile for a course. If you're enrolled in a course as an instructor, you're able to um, give the course a nickname, so a quick and easy way to understand um, which course is which. And you can also change the color of the overlay for all of those courses. So I can change the color um, and I can also give the course a quick nickname. Again, anytime I want to save my changes, make sure you scroll down or locate the bottom of the pop up and select save or apply um, To that item. So you can change those features as well. You'll also notice that on some of my tiles. I have little items and icons here. Those indicate um, areas where my course might be frequently updating. We have items like the files icon, if there are a lot of files in the course. Um, we have discussions, if there are discussions available in the course. And then things like announcements as well, so if you have announcements in your course. Anytime any of these items is updated, you'll see a number appear next to it, um, which will indicate the number of times that item has changed in the course. So you can click on that and it will take you directly to the discussions area in the class, for example. So I'm going to return back to my dashboard just really quickly. And you'll notice that there isn't, I at least haven't noticed, there isn't much of a limit to the number of courses that you can have on your dashboard. So I'm enrolled in quite a few classes right now, so I have quite a few things. Um, so I expect that this area will um, start to really fill up as you teach in Canvas over time. But luckily, there is a way we can control what items appear on our dashboard page. And we actually do that from the courses link. So let's talk a little bit about courses. When you select courses, um, you're going to see a little pop up on the left hand side of your screen 
which will list all of the courses that you're enrolled in um, in alphabetical order. So this is another way to take a quick link um, to any of the courses that you're enrolled in in Canvas. Now, if I scroll all the way down to the bottom, I can select all courses and that will take me to a new page. And this is where I'm able to see all of the courses that I'm enrolled in. I'm able to see how I am enrolled in that course, whether that be a teacher or a student um, or maybe even a builder. You're able to see whether or not the course is published. And what published means in Canvas is whether or not students are able to view the course. Um, and then I'm also able to see the course, the nickname, and the term um, for each of the courses. Now you'll notice for some of these courses, some of them have a colored in little star icon. Now if the star icon is colored in, that means that the course appears on my Canvas dashboard. So it has one of those little tiles um, and a quick link to that course. If I wanna remove a course um, from my dashboard, all I need to do is click on that star icon and you'll notice that the coloring is removed from that star, which means it will no longer appear on my Canvas dashboard. If I wanna add a course to my Canvas dashboard, it's gonna be the same process. So any of the courses that are not colored in, I can just click on that and you'll notice that those will turn orange um, and be filled in and I'll now be able to see those on my Canvas dashboard. So I'm able to see any of this content. You'll also see past enrollments for any of the older courses. Um, so for things like the 2018 spring semester, you'll able, you're able to see your past enrollments as well. You're also able to see any groups that you are enrolled in in Canvas. Um, while it's likely that as an instructor, you won't be enrolled in a group, um, just in case you ever are, you're able to scroll down and see that as well. You'll notice um, that on my navigation bar on the left-hand side of my screen, I also have the groups icon. Um, you might not see that right now, and don't worry if you don't, because you will likely not see the groups icon unless you are enrolled in a group in a course. Um, so I am enrolled in a group, um, so I am able to do a quick link to that groups page. If you are an instructor that likes to organize your students into groups for any activities, your students will see the groups link on the left-hand side of their page and be able to quickly access any of the groups that they are enrolled in. So that's just something important to note. So the next thing that's available to us on the left-hand side of the screen is the calendar button. And this is probably one of the most exciting features um, in Canvas, especially in comparison to Blackboard. Um, Blackboard's calendar feature wasn't super robust and wasn't well connected um, to different items in your Blackboard courses. And Canvas is completely different. Um, the really nice thing about the Canvas calendar is that you can see all of the courses that you are enrolled in in the calendar at one time, or you can just look at an individual course. And the way that you do that is sort of the same way we controlled our course settings in the courses area. You click next to the name of the course and you'll then see um, that course content update on your Canvas calendar. And it might just take a minute. Um, for you to be able to see that. But you'll notice that those items will start to appear on your Canvas calendar. So these are all items from different courses that I'm enrolled in. I'm able to see them in different colors, um, so I know that they are assigned to um, different courses. And I'm able to see what date um, and maybe even what time that assignment is due. Now, as a student, this is really helpful to me because I'm able to click on these assignments and actually view um, a, the detailed information about that assignment um, and the due date and time as well. I'm also able to access a quick link to the course. So I'm able to access that course quickly, um, especially if I have upcoming homework. Um, so the feature is gonna work very similarly for instructors. You'll see all of the assignments that you have listed in your courses um, within the course calendar. You'll also notice that in the right-hand corner, there's a mini version of that calendar, which lets me know any dates um, where assignments are due. So anything that is boxed off in this mini calendar um, has an assignment with an associated due date. So the really nice thing about this also is that you can download this calendar feed into your Outlook calendar. It's important to note that that calendar feed won't automatically update. So if you make changes um, to this calendar, and you had already previously downloaded the calendar to your Outlook, um, those changes will not be reflected in Outlook. So 
make sure you're not downloading your calendar feed until you have all of the assignments squared away for the semester and you're confident um, that the due dates and times are correct. So that's the calendar feature. Um, and I will show you how to add a due date and time to a couple of different assignment types a little bit later in this presentation so you can start updating your Canvas calendar. Now the next option is going to be inbox. Um, so if you select inbox on the left hand side of your screen, Again, this is another feature um, that I think is super helpful in Canvas and wasn't quite as well done in Blackboard. Now in Canvas, the inbox feature is gonna function a lot like an email um, and it is associated with your UMKC email. So you can view um, your inbox notifications from all of your courses at once or just specific courses. So you're able to select um, individual courses and only see the messages available from that course. Um, you are also able to view your inbox, maybe just unread messages um, or sent messages as well. So you can really organize um, your Canvas inbox sort of the way that you want to um, and view different items in it. If you ever want to send a message in Canvas, um, there is a compose a new message button near the top of the screen. If you select compose a new message, um, it's going to give you a little pop up where you can start composing. Now, the nice thing about this is that you can select an entire course um, to send a message to. Let's see here, this one here. Um, and then you can select individual people in the course. Um, so I could select individual teachers or all teachers. I can select everyone in a course. I can select individual students as well. Um, or I can select student groups. So if my students are enrolled in different groups in a course, um, I am able to compose a message um, to everyone in that group. I want to make sure that I give a subject to my message just for clarification. And another really nice feature in this Canvas um, inbox is that I can send an individual message to each recipient. So while I'm sending it to a group of students in a class, this message will be sent as an individual message to each person, which is really nice if you're trying to start a dialogue with individual students. You know, maybe some students haven't submitted an assignment and you wanna send um, the same message to all of them, but you want it to be an individual message. So that's a really nice feature. To send a message, you click in the box um, and begin typing. Um, so you can type anything you'd like here. And you also have the option to um, add attachments by selecting on the icon down at the lower uh, bottom left. Or you can actually add um, a fun media comment as well. So you can record media for your students um, and then upload that media to the comment box. So if you want to send them um, a quick short video um, in, their, uh, in their Canvas inbox, you're able to do that as well. So just sort of a fun feature. Um, when you're done composing your message, you'll select send um, to send that Canvas um, message to an inbox. You're also able to search for individual people um, in the top right hand corner as well. So you're able to access um, different recipients that are available to you um, in the different courses that you are enrolled in. So that's another way that you can locate a recipient. Another important thing to note um, about the Canvas inbox is that you are able to um, control all of the responses to students throughout various semesters. So let's say Lauren was enrolled in my spring 2018 course and I have a long correspondence with Lauren in that class. Um, and then Lauren is actually enrolled in one of my fall 2018 courses. All of the messages that I had with Lauren um, in the spring of 2018 will be saved in Canvas and be attached to all of the messages that we send in the fall as well. So that long correspondence will continue from semester to semester with all of your students. So you're able to see all of the messages that you sent to one another, which is really convenient. So the next thing that you might see on the left hand side of your account is the commons button. Now I have run into this problem before in Canvas 101 presentations that this commons button is missing um, for some instructors. If that is the case for you, um, I want you to send me an email after this presentation to let me know that your commons button is missing so I can pass that information along to ITS. Um, we're trying to get that fixed up for all of the instructors. Now the Canvas Commons is just something you might want to check out for fun. Um, and there's uh, a lot of different um, content and information available in Canvas Commons. 
Now the Canvas Commons is going to be a resource sharing location for every user in Canvas. And this even extends outside of UMKC. You'll notice that there has been um, information shared by an instructor at Emporia State University. Now you can share all sorts of different items um, in your courses. So you can share entire courses, individual modules, items like quizzes, um, and even images that you use in your course. You're able to share all of that content with different instructors um, across all sorts of different um, places that use Canvas. So I encourage you to just check this out and see what kind of content is available. If you're interested in sharing any of this content, you are more than welcome to do that as well. So the very last item on the left-hand side of the screen is gonna be the help button. Um, and this is going to be available to you at all times um, while you're logged into Canvas. And there are some important helpful links um, over on the left-hand side of your screen. One of them includes UMKC Connect or Starfish. So that's gonna be really important for your students and scheduling advising sessions. We have a quick link um, about accessibility. So this includes accessibility policies, training and resources. We also have the Canvas request system. This is a system that allows you to request course combos um, and copies. They can create new sandbox template sites, um, all sorts of different information and stuff for you available in the Canvas request system. So be sure to check that out. We also have a quick link to instructional tech support, so ITS, um, where they can help you with any of your technical issues in Canvas or um, in third party plugins like Panopto. We also have a link um, to the Ask the Librarian function, um, a link for online student orientation, Canvas guides, which are going to be step-by-step -step instructions for all sorts of different Canvas problems. So even if you want to learn how to create an assignment, the Canvas guides are going to give you a step-by-step -step, um, instructional guide on how to do that, including um, some nice screenshots. So I actually use the Canvas guides quite a bit um, as I build in Canvas. Additionally, um, your students will be able to ask the instructor a question. Um, so anytime they select this, they'll be able to select you as an instructor and send you a message in Canvas. If you run into any strange Canvas problems, you are able to report that problem um, and let us know that something is not quite right in Canvas. And then finally, the very last thing is UMKC resources and policy statements. This is that document um, provided by the provost's office that has all of the different policies um, and information for students that are included in your syllabi. This is updated every semester by the UMKC online team and will have the most updated version available for you and your students on the left-hand menu. So that was a quick version of the accounts um, information that you have available on the left-hand side of your screen at all times in Canvas. So now let's dive into a Canvas course. To access a Canvas course, I can do that one of two ways, either through the dashboard or through the courses icon. For right now, I'll select dashboard, and then to enter a course, I'll select its name. So this is an example of a Canvas course. This is my Canvas 101 page. Um, you'll notice that there is, just like Blackboard, a left-hand um, menu guide where my students are able to access and navigate through the course. Um, when I first enter a course, I'm going to land on the home page. And the home page can really be controlled um, by the instructor. You can make lots of different changes to the home page, and you can decide where the home page is located in your course. Um, so this is an example of my home page here, and we'll talk about how to change that in just a moment. So I want to direct your attention to the right hand side of the screen, which is where you'll see some course status information and some important quick links. The very first one is course status. Um, you'll notice that my course is currently published. This means that my students enrolled in this course would be able to access this course. It is published for them. If I needed to remove this course for, for my students for any reason, I can select unpublish and it will unpublish my course for my students. Um, and you'll notice that if a course is unpublished, the unpublish button will turn a dark red um, and give you a little slash icon. So I'm gonna publish my course again so my students are able to view it. So the next item is import from commons. This is how I can import content from the Canvas commons that we talked about a little bit earlier. So I could take any content from the commons here. The next item is choose homepage. So this is how I control how my students are accessing 
um, the course. This is how I decide what page they'll see first when they enter my course. So if I select choose home page, it's going to give me a little pop up where I have a couple of different options. I can have my students view a course activity stream, which is going to be a list of any discussions, announcements, or assignments that are upcoming or posted. I can create my own front page, which is what I have chosen to do and what I would encourage you to do in Canvas. Um, so this is a customized home page for my course. Um, I can select course modules, which is where all of my course content is going to live. So all of my discussions, my quizzes, my assignments, any of my files, those will all live in course modules. I can select assignments list, so a long list of any assignments in my course, including discussions, quizzes, um, and submitted assignments like Word documents. Or I can have my students land on the syllabus page. So that is another option as well. To change my course homepage, all I need to do is select um, the little circle next to each of those options and it will change my front page. Again, make sure you select save to save any changes you make to your homepage. The next item is view course stream. Um, this is where I can see some recent information for my course. This might be really helpful for you um, if you need to see the recent activity, especially if you have a lot of discussion boards going on in your course or um, a lot of assignments. So you can view the course stream that way. You can also select new announcement, which will take you to the announcements area where you can make a quick announcement for your students, but we'll talk about that in a minute. And then the next item is student view. Um, I use this button all the time as I'm building in Canvas, especially because I'm still um, learning a lot about the LMS and I wanna make sure that all of my choices make sense for my students. So anytime I make a pretty substantial change, I'll go to my homepage and select student view, um, where I will then see a really pink, um, loud pink border around my screen that lets me know um, how my students are going to see this class. So I'll notice that a lot of my buttons are missing, a lot of my options over here are gone. Um, so this is exactly how my students view the course. And so I'm able to see that um, from their perspective. If I need to leave student view, that option is available in the lower right-hand corner. So I'll select leave student view. And then the next option that you have as an instructor is view course analytics. Um, this is really interesting for you. You can see any of the activity um, that has been completed in your course. If you have any assignments available in your class, you're able to see when those were submitted um, and whether or not they're missing late or on time. You're also able to take a look at the grades um, and then individual student information. You can click on individual students to get their individual analytics as well. So you can see their activity, their communication, and their submissions and grades. Um, so it gives you a lot of important information about each individual student. So I'll return to my course. Um, and one of the things that you should always keep an eye on at the top of the page is those course breadcrumbs that are going to help you navigate back um, from where you came from. So if you click on those um, at any time, those are going to take you back um, to where you uh, were initially when you clicked on that option. So I return to my course by selecting Tori's sandbox at the top of the class. So that's the home page. Um, the next option that I have in my class that I want to touch on is announcements. If I select announcements, um, I'll see any of the announcements that I've posted to my course listed here. Um, and if I want to create a new announcement, I'll have the plus announcement button in the top right hand corner. Now this is going to be very, very similar to Blackboard announcements. Um, I'll do, you know, give it a really simple title. Um, I'm able to add any content here in the same way that I would in Blackboard. I can type any content. Um, I can also add images or even Panopto videos. Um, I can add all sorts of content here. I can then decide um, who I want to post this announcement to. This is going to be especially important if you are um, using a combined course. So you teach multiple sections from one class and you only want to send the announcement to maybe a specific section. You can select which section receives that announcement here. You're also able to choose files and attach those um, to your Canvas announcements. So maybe send them um, the syllabus or important assignment information. Uh, you can do that here. You also have some really neat options um, when it comes to announcements. And my favorite one is going to be the delay posting option. Let's say that you have a really important announcement that you need to send out on a Saturday night. 
um, but your little girl's soccer tournament is on Saturday and you know you won't be a by a computer. What you can do is write your whole announcement and then delay um, the posting and decide when you actually want that posting to appear. So I can select that I don't want this announcement to be sent until Saturday at let's say 7 p.m. Um, and that way no one will be able to see this announcement until that date. Now another thing that you can do with your announcements in Canvas is you can also allow your students to comment on those announcements um, and they sort of become a discussion board in a way. So your students are able to interact with your announcements, um, maybe correct something that you said or ask a question for clarification. Um, and all of the other students in your course are going to be able to see that as well. You can also allow liking um, to your announcements. So if students like your announcement, they can like it, um, just sort of like a Facebook like, um, and you know, promote what you're saying if you wanted to do something fun like that. So that is another option as well. Um, so when you're done writing your announcements, make sure you scroll down to the bottom and press save. Um, and that will send your announcement both in Canvas um, to the student's Canvas inbox and then also to their UMKC email ad address. Um, so they'll receive that announcement in two different places. The next item is syllabus. And this will appear in all of your Canvas courses. Um, the first item at the top of your screen is going to be course syllabus. This is where you can add a file um, or copy and paste your full syllabus um, into your course. I would recommend doing both. And you can see in my example that I have um, my course syllabus available for download. And then also I've copied and pasted the syllabus into Canvas as well. So my students can access the syllabus in two different ways. To add information to your course syllabus area, you'll select edit at the top right hand corner. And this is where you can add information to your syllabus here. Now let's talk a little bit about adding documents um, to any of these areas in Canvas. So anytime you see a large text box like this, you're also going to see um, this area on the right hand side of your screen where you can add content. Now you can add content in a couple of different ways in the class. You can add links, which are going to be um, links to areas in your course. You can add files um, for download, and then you can also add images. So let's practice adding a link um, to a quiz, for example. So let's say I want my students to take a quiz um, at the beginning of my course syllabus. So take introductory quiz, and I'll add a link to that quiz by selecting the quizzes option and then selecting the quiz. When I click on that quiz, um, you'll notice that it turns yellow here and opens the quiz. So now this has become a link to the quiz in my course. Let's say then I want my students to review their modules page in Canvas. Um, I can add a link to the modules page here um, by selecting modules and I can select individual modules or I can go to course navigation and select the entire area. So I want them to review the entire modules area. I can click that and it will give them a quick link to that area in the course. Then after I want them to do that, I want them to review the syllabus. So let's add a file here, if I could learn how to spell syllabus. There we go. Okay, so we'll add a um, link to my syllabus file and I'll click files here to do that. Um, and then I can add my syllabus by selecting that file. You'll notice that the file item will appear here. Now, one of my favorite things that I can do with these files is I can actually delete the extensions um, so that it doesn't have that ugly dot doc X um, item on here. And I can also change the name of the file so my students really understand what the file is. So this will be my Canvas 101 syllabus as well. So I can do that and change the name of the file really easily. So those are some of the ways that you can link to certain um, items and images in your course. Now the next thing I wanna do is just add a fun image for my students just so they know exactly where they are. Um, so I'll click in the text box where I want that item to appear and then I'll select the image on the left or the right hand side of my screen. I'm also able to upload a new image from this page in the same way that I'm also able to upload a new file um, as well. These don't have to be existing images or files that you've already uploaded into your course. Okay, so now that I've made those changes, um, I wanna make sure that I scroll all the way down and locate my update or save button and I'll select update syllabus. 
And you'll notice that all of those changes are now saved and they act as links in my course. So I'm able to select modules and it will take me to the modules area in my class. So go back to syllabus for just a moment. I'm also able to select orientation quiz and it will take me to that quiz in my course. So navigation uh, options are really robust in Canvas. They're not quite as limited as they were um, in Blackboard. So I have a little bit of fun with those items um, and see what you can do as far as navigation goes. On the course syllabus um, page, your students will also be able to see how assignments are weighted in your course. Um, and they'll also be able to access a quick calendar that just has the items for your course in it. So any of the days um, that are highlighted in color have associated assignments with them. So it's likely that as you add assignments to your course, you're going to see this calendar get more and more detailed. Now, the other thing I want to draw your attention to is at the very bottom of the page on the syllabus page, you'll see a course summary. Now, this is not an option you can turn off or hide for students. Um, I've had that question a couple of times. The course summary is always going to be there, um, at least until Canvas decides that um, they want to give you the option to take it away. So for right now, this is something that we have in the class. Now, the course summary is going to list any and all assignments in the class with their details and their due date and their time. Um, so any of the assignments that you have in the course that are published and available for students to view will be listed in the course summary. So the students will be able to see those um, listed at the bottom of the page. It sort of acts like a course schedule in a way. Um, so the students would be able to see all of their upcoming assignments that are published and available for viewing. So that's the syllabus page. So let's move on to modules. Um, modules is going to be the main way that Canvas organizes your content. Um, and something important to note about this area is that none of these buttons or options can be renamed. Um, so we are stuck with the word modules on the left hand side of our screen. So when you go to modules, um, what your students are going to be expecting is to see all of the content available for their course. A module will act um, as either a weekly section or maybe a unit section in your class. So um, you can name or rename these modules anything that you want to, um, depending on the organization for your class. So to create a module for your course, we'll select plus module at the top right hand corner of the page, which will give us a little pop up. Um, and this is where we can name our module. So let's say I want my modules organized by week. So I'll name it week one. Um, I can lock my module so I can have um, this information locked and unavailable to students until a certain date. Um, I can also add prerequisites um, to this area. What prerequisites are in Canvas um, is items that the students have to complete before they are able to view a module. So let's say I want them um, to complete, let's say, the Start Here module before they are able to access module one which means they would have to complete all of the assignments and start here before module one becomes available to them. But I don't want any prerequisites in mine. So after I've named my module and adjusted the settings to my preferences, I'll select add module and you'll see that module appear um, on your modules page. And you'll notice that these modules have different icons next to them. This one has a circle with a slash and this one is a green check mark. The green check mark means that it is published and available for students, while the gray slash mark means that it is unpublished and your students would not be able to view it. If you have students sending you a lot of messages at the beginning of a semester saying that they can't see some of their content, you might double check that all of that content is published. And the way that you publish content is by selecting um, that little icon and it will become published or unpublished. If you're unhappy with any of your modules at any time, you can select the three dots to the right hand side of the modules name and select edit, which will allow you to adjust the prerequisites, the name, um, or when the module will become available for students. You can also move the module or delete the module, or you can share the module at any time to the comments. Now let's practice adding content to the module because right now the module has nothing inside. To add content to a module, we'll select the plus button in the top right hand corner and you'll see a pop up appear. And this is where we can add all sorts of different content to our modules. I'll first select the drop down menu at the top of the pop up, 
which will give me a couple of different options. And these are the types of things that I can add to modules. I can add assignments, quizzes, files, content pages, which are going to be pages that students do not interact with, but maybe read content from, discussion boards, a text header, which is really good for organization, external URLs, so anytime a student needs to visit a website outside of Canvas, you can add it this way, or an external tool. So if you use any textbook publishers or any plugins like that, you can select them in this way. So let's practice adding a content page for right now. When I select content page, it's going to give me a list of all of the pages that I've already created in my course, or I can select new page at the top, um, which will give me the option to create and add a new page to my module. When I select that item, I need to make sure that I give my page a name um, so that I can save it. If I don't give my page a name, um, it will not allow me to add that item. So I'll select add item here. And you'll notice now that that new page appears um, under my new module. Again, this is not published, so I want to select publish so my students will be able to see it. If I want to edit content on that page, I can just select the page and select edit at the top right hand corner. So that's how you go about adding content to modules. Eventually, your modules will have lots of content in them. So this is just an example of what a module might look like after you build out all of that content. So I first have a content page that lists my objectives that my students can read through. I then have a, have a text header, which is not something my students are able to click on. You'll notice as I click on it, nothing happens. This is just for organization. And then I have additional pages um, with lectures. So these contain Panopto video lectures for my students. I then have readings and I've added readings in a couple of different ways in this module. And you'll notice that each of these content items have different icons indicating what kind of item it is. So the content page is indicated by what looks like a little piece of paper. Um, and then I have a little clip um, that indicates that this is going to be a file that I've added. I have this chain um, icon, which is a web link. And then down here under my assignments, I have quizzes and practice assignments. Um, so my quiz is going to be indicated by a little flying rocket ship. Um, I do not know why they chose that icon, but it's sort of fun. Um, and then the next item I have is an assignment, which is going to be a piece of paper with a pencil. So I can always just double check um, what type of uh, content item I've added here. One of the organizational tools that you have within your modules is that you can indent items um, to the right or to the left, depending on how you want to organize this. So for example, I've indented these items over to the right just slightly to help my students read this more easily. You do that by selecting the three dots um, to the right hand side of the item and select increase or decrease indent. Um, and that's how you can move things over. If I'm unhappy with the way that this content is organized, I can click and drag any of these content items around within my module. Um, I can also drag them from module to module. So um, I would need to move things around. I can change any of that really easily within my class. Um, so that is how you control your modules area. The modules area for students um, is really easy. It's sort of like carrying them through the course. You know, everything is step one, step two, step three. So when I click on each of these items as a student, I'll have these next and previous buttons at the bottom of my page where I can go through my content. So if I select next, it will take me to the next item I need to complete. Um, so I'm always able to see the next couple of things that I need to do. So while Blackboard sort of expected students to figure out navigation on their own, what Canvas wants you to do is use modules to really guide students through their coursework. Um, you're really carrying them through how to get through this class using the modules feature. The next item I want to discuss is discussions. Um, this is going to be on the left hand side of your screen. Discussions function very similarly um, to the discussions in Canvas or excuse me in Blackboard. The organizational feature is slightly different um, when it comes to the home page for discussions. You have three different options, um, pinned discussions, regular discussions, or discussions that are closed for comments. Um, Discussions that are closed for comments, students will still be able to read, but they will no longer be able to comment on any of them. 
Um, regular discussions here are organized by recent activity. So any of your most recent discussions will be um, selected at the top of the screen. And then you also have pinned discussions. These discussions students can comment on at any time and will always appear at the top of the discussions page. So if you use a discussion board like Ask Your Instructor, I definitely recommend having that pinned to the top of the page um, so that your students can easily see it. Now, when you first go to your discussions area when you're building a course, I recommend going to the very top right hand corner and selecting that gear icon. The gear icon is where you can edit discussion settings um, and some of these are going to be very important for some of your courses. You'll want to decide whether or not you want students to be able to create discussion topics, edit and delete their own posts or attach files to discussions. Um, so make sure that you're going through the discussion settings and saving those settings um, as you make decisions about them. To add a discussion board, select plus discussion at the top right hand corner of the page. And you'll notice that this is going to look a lot like a lot of the other areas in Canvas um, where we've built content. You give it a name, you give it um, important information like instructions for your students, and you can link and link to areas of the course and add files on the right hand side of the screen. You can also um, control some options in your discussion boards. Um, there are really important things like users must post before seeing replies. You can also decide whether or not this discussion board is graded um, or worth any points. And if you do that, you'll notice that the points possible and display grade as options appear for you. So you can control the number of points an assignment is worth. Um, and then you can also decide on a due date and time down here um, at the bottom of the page. So you can select the due date and time, um, and that will now appear on your Canvas calendar um, and on the course summaries area in your syllabus. Once you're done making any of these changes, um, you will be able to save those changes um, at the bottom of the page. You can select save, which will just save it for you, or you can select save and publish, which will make it available for your students. So now you've cre created a discussions page. Um, if you are subscribed to a discussion, that means you will receive emails about the discussion to your UMKC email address. You can also unsubscribe um, by selecting the subscribe button on the side. If it turns gray, you will no longer receive emails about that. Um, to reply to posts, students will select reply underneath the discussion um, and will enter a page very similar to the one that we were just on and, and be able to type up their reply. The next page is grades. Uh, this is a grade book that is similar to Blackboard's, although I would argue it has a few less features than Blackboard's grade book. Um, you are able to organize your columns by clicking and dragging these columns. Um, you can also change your total column to appear on the right hand side, or you can move it to the end of your grade book so that it appears all the way on the left hand side. You can control your gradebook in a couple of different ways um, at the top of the screen. You can view things by assignment name or due date or even the module order. Um, you can also use some filters in the class. So if you have organized your students into assignment groups um, or a groups on their own, you can view the course in that way. You can also import and export um, your gradebook if you needed to take your gradebook with you or save it for your own records, you're able to do that as well. There are also a couple of different gradebook settings available to you on the right hand side of the page. Um, you can apply certain grades for missing submissions, which is really um, nice. And you can also apply deductions to late submissions as well. Um, so you're welcome to play around with some of these gradebook settings and adjust it for um, how you'd like to organize your class. So you'll notice that some of these items on the left hand side of my page are grayed out. Um, and these grayed out areas mean that these items are not able to be seen by my students. Um, so to adjust that, I'm going to go to my settings near the bottom um, of the left hand page. In settings is where I can control a lot of my course details and control how my students navigate through my course. So selecting navigation at the top of the page um, will allow me to drag and drop items um, to reorder this navigation menu. So let's say I want my students to be able to access assignments at any time and not just through my modules area. To do that, I'll click on assignments and drag it to the top of the page. And now that will appear next to my modules button. 
let's say I also want the UMKC libraries link um, to be available in my course, I can click and drag that up um, and be able to access that at any time. I can also click and drag to remove things from my navigation side. So I can click and drag and remove Panopto recordings as well. I'll scroll down to the bottom of my page and press save to save those changes. And you'll notice now that the UMKC libraries link and the assignments link are now available in my course. So that's how you're able to control navigation really easily in the class. The next option that's available to you in settings is feature options. Um, there is one of these feature options that I encourage you to turn on in your class. And what feature options are in Canvas are options um, and features that Canvas is testing out um, in beta forms. So the one that I would recommend that you turn on is the new gradebook. If you toggle that on um, in your course, it's going to give you a more robust gradebook um, with different features that are not available in the old Canvas gradebook. Um, so I would recommend turning that on for all of your classes, just so you have lots of different options available to, to you. The very last thing you should always check out is course details. This is where you can add an image um, that will appear on the dashboard page. So you noticed in the dashboard that a couple of my classes had different images available to them. Um, so you are able to change the image at any time. You can do that by selecting the three dots um, in the top right hand corner of the course image. And you can choose an image for your class or remove the image if you dislike the image that's associated with your course. You can also change the course name. Um, so if you prefer to rename your courses in Blackboard, you can do the same thing in Canvas. You can also adjust um, the time zone or um, the start and end date, all sorts of different things here. If you scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page, there is a more options link. If you select that, you'll notice that more options will appear for you in your course settings. Um, probably the most important one or the one that I would recommend for you is the show recent announcements on course homepage. This means that no matter what you set as your course homepage in Canvas, at least a recent announcement from you will appear on that page. And you can select the number of recent announcements that appear for your students um, using that drop down menu. Anytime you make any changes in this area, make sure that you scroll all the way to the bottom and select update course details. Um, that will be super important to um, save any changes that you've made. Okay, so that is a brief introduction to Canvas. Um, I also want to point out to you that there are specific links for quizzes and assignments, um, but we do have additional trainings um, that are about an hour for each of those items. So they'll walk you through how to create a quiz and the different quiz question types. Um, and they'll also walk you through assignments and how to create those and add rubrics and do all of the sort of things that you'd want to do um, with those Canvas assignments as well. So I encourage you to take a look at our training calendar and sign up for um, some of those trainings as well. So um, I am going to open up my, all right, so I have the chat open. Um, has everyone's question um, been answered? This is your time to ask me any questions. Just make sure that you're unmuting your microphone if you need additional um, question help. So feel free to ask any questions. Um, if you are all done with this presentation, then I will be sending you some follow up links for you to read through um, and access. And thank you so much for coming to this presentation. I really appreciate your time.